Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much, Asia Society, for um, inviting me back to receive another award. Um, you gave me an award two years ago um, on the East Coast in New York, uh, which was really fine and really fancy, but I, I love the Bay Area. Uh, so go Asia Society West. <laughs> So I grew up in this small regional town uh, with 100,000 people. It was a two hour plane ride away from the nearest city with a million people. And when I was growing up, I read my brother's old editions of Time Magazine and I was really inspired by Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. Jobs and Wozniak were 25 and 21 when they co-founded Apple together. I was really inspired by the Google guys and how they were in their early 20s, dropped out of their PhD program in order to co-found Google together. And it made me realize as a young teenager that with technology, you don't need to be a certain age, you don't need to have certain qualifications, you don't need to have lots of gray hairs, you don't need to have lots of money. All you need is to have really great ideas and lots of grit and determination, and you could change the world. I first came to America uh, for my first trip in, in 2011. That was to attend the Grace Hopper Celebration for Women in Computing in Portland, Oregon. Uh, since then, I, I don't think I've I really spent much time in the States until 2015 when I attended Singularity University's Graduate Studies Program uh, down in Mountain View at, at NASA Ames. And it was there that I finally got my first taste, I think, of what it's like to be in the Bay Area, we, Singularity University's graduate studies program is all about how do we improve the lives of a billion people within the next 10 years. And they teach you about the latest in medicine, ro robotics, nanotechnology, uh, biology. They also teach you about big problems in the world, uh, pollution, uh, finances, space, food. So there's 150 lectures over about seven weeks. And then they say, go and impact the lives of a billion people over the next 10 years, you have three weeks. <laughs> and so my co-founder and I, we thought, what can we do in three weeks? And uh, we, we thought back to all the lectures that we'd received uh, and we decided that we wanted to put uh, computer vision on a phone so that people who were, uh, uh, had, had vision difficulties could uh, use the technology to identify objects in their everyday lives. There's 300 million people who are visually impaired and uh, our technology has now reached over 500,000 people uh, in 26 different languages around the world. And uh, of course now I uh, run a robotics company and, and we work on telepresence robots so that people with long-term illness uh, disabilities can go to work and school remotely and, and also robotic arms to help people in their everyday lives. When I think about my journey, I think, I think back to uh, RoboGals, um, where it all began uh, in terms of getting girls interested in engineering through my efforts of going out to schools with robots and teaching girls how to build and program them. That's where I, that's where I really cut my teeth in terms of going out there, making stuff happen, failing, and then doing it all again, and again, and again. And I think if I didn't have that experience of trying to do something on that small scale and building my self-confidence and building my skills, I wouldn't be able to keep taking the next step in my journey in order to improve people's lives and, and also to, to challenge myself and, and make myself a better person. And so I'm so proud that Robigals' work uh, has impact in over 11 countries, including in Asia and in Indonesia, the Philippines, Japan, uh, in the wider Asia Pacific, in Australia, in New Zealand, and here in North America at the California Institute of Technology, Columbia University, Georgia Tech, University of Southern California, uh, Wellesley College, Queen's University, the University of Alberta, University of Calgary, and the University of Toronto. When I was running RoboGals, I thought to myself, I love what I do. I love 
sharing my passion for engineering with all of these girls. I love leading teams of thousands of volunteers to go out and do our work. It really empowered me. It really gave me so much energy. But I thought to myself, I don't just want to tell girls that they can do everything that they want with engineering. I want to show girls that they can do everything that they want, anything that they dream, anything they can imagine with engineering. And so that's why I went out and started my own technology companies to show girls that anything was possible. And I think the Bay Area really symbolizes that. When I first arrived here uh, on this trip, a friend of mine said, welcome to the Bay Area. Whatever you can dream, this is where dreams come true. And I really believe that. And uh, when I look around this room today, I'm just so honored that uh, you've chosen me to, to stand here and give this speech and accept this honor. Uh, because I, I think the Bay Area is a place of doers. This is a room of doers. I love thinking about technology, talking about technology, brainstorming about what's next in technology. And so if you'd ever like to have a chat about anything related to the future or future business uh, collaborations or partnerships or opportunities, please uh, come and see me and I'd love to have a chat with you. Thank you.